Floyd, welcome to American Black Journal. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So it's hard to believe that it was 25 years ago uh, that my friend Aaron Dworkin started the Sphinx organization. I can kind of remember uh, that happening, um, but let's go back to the original idea here and the environment that that created it, the, the, the dearth of uh, musicians of color in, in classical music and professional circles uh, 25 years ago and how that's changed since Sphinx has been around. Yes, our founder, Aaron Dorkin, 26 years ago now, we just finished celebrating our 25th year anniversary, started the Sphinx organization with the Sphinx competition. And his aim was the same aim. The vision and the mission of the organization has not changed. And mm -hmm. I think that's important. Uh, the goal was to bring more Black and Brown people into orchestras. There was hardly any. Um, there were a few in major orchestras, but there was no consistency. There was no support for Black and Brown individuals who wanted a career in classical music. Yeah. And over the years, he that mission has not changed. But now we're seeing a different landscape because of that pursuit. Mm -hmm. how different uh, how different is it? Uh, how can we kind of quantify uh, the influence that Sphinx has had? It has been huge. You know, I only joined the Sphinx organization about a year ago, but I was a member of one of Sphinx's programs. I am an alumni mm -hmm. of the Sphinx organization as well. And what makes that significant is not changing that mission, right? Being very intentional about it so that, now, when we have a landscape where people are more apt to have more Black and Brown people throughout the organization, mm -hmm. the Sphinx organization has been there doing the work. So now we're an authority on it for people in the industry. So they come to us for information, for access. And so we're able to use our cachet to help diversify the landscape. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you you referenced the national competition uh, each year, which is an, an important part of, uh, of of the organization and an important part of um, you know establishing that pipeline of of uh, musicians into into professional careers. But Sphinx does a lot more as well, and and that's also been really key, I think, to to not just um, uh, establishing the idea that that there should be more black and brown people in uh, in classical music, but but finding the practical ways that that has to happen. In other words, there are a lot of things that have to come together for a young person who might dream of being in a in a professional orchestra uh, to get to there. Uh, Sphinx does a lot along the way to help that that work. Yeah, it's as you said, it's the whole pipeline to become a professional musician. You know, the question is always, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And the answer is a lot, a yeah. lot of long term practice right. <laughs> and support. So Sphinx starts at the elementary level uh, and provides support all the way through performance. Uh, we have administrators, we have a program for administrators called Sphinx Lead to help create the belonging a musician who comes up in the pipeline needs to survive and thrive in the orchestral landscape. We have Sphinx Connect, which just ended in the competition. It's a conference in which we hosted over a thousand people in Detroit from the industry, funders, artists, all focused on diversifying the arts landscape. And all of that starts with that pipeline and that competition program. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about uh, this year's event uh, and and some of the highlights from from it. It was the first time since the pandemic began that we were able to do the competition in person. In person, right? Yeah, it was <laughs> it was amazing. The the whole vibe really <laughs> was one where everyone was so happy to be there and celebrate in person at the Max and Marjorie Fisher Hall in Detroit. Um, we held a competition of our three finalists, uh, which are black and brown musicians. And the winner in Gioma also won audience choice as well, performing a work by Samuel Coolridge Taylor, who was also a black composer who wrote 
um, in the 40s, 50s era. And it was really a celebration of years of work. And the winner, I mean, the audience loved her at the concert and the judges really recognized her skill. And it was really just the way to end the conference and the celebration overall. Yeah. And a little later, we're going to, for our viewers, share a little bit of uh, Njoma's uh, performance. Uh, um, uh, talk also about the pandemic and the effect it had uh, on the organization and the competition and this idea that, hey, we're back, we're back in person and that really does matter. Yeah, the, overall, the pandemic had a huge impact on the arts as a whole, especially performing arts. A lot of people were furloughed, furloughed from orchestras, Freelancers could not perform. And so the Sphinx organization pivoted. We created funds to just put money directly in the hands of our artists. We have a, over a thousand alumni to support, right? Uh, and so we're also from marginalized communities. We support black and brown musicians. And so they were hit significantly uh, by the pandemic. And so we were able to create funds with the help of funders uh, and the hard work of our staff to support these musicians, as well as administrators in the field. And coming back, we brought, got to bring everyone together to Detroit for days. The Renaissance Center was uh, full of us <laughs> for days <laughs> in Detroit, despite the weather, yeah. people came. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I also want to talk a little about, uh, we've been talking about the effect that uh, Sphinx and its work has had on classical music and, and professional uh, classical circles in in our country, but there's also kind of a reverse benefit, and and that's uh, on black and brown communities. The the the, the ways that they have changed uh, because of the opportunities that have that have opened up uh, because of Sphinx, and of course because of the presence uh, of black and brown uh, musicians uh, in these professional circles. Yes, we actually have a touring orchestra called the Sphinx Virtuosi. Mm -hmm. And they go around and they've been around for, I believe, 10 or 11 years now. Um, I could be wrong, <laughs> but they go around and perform. Uh, it's an all black and brown orchestra. And we make a point of performing for black and brown audiences so that they see the possibilities, right? These are musicians who do perform in major orchestras as well. And they are just at that top level. And these kids do not get to see that. Our spa program, Sphinx Performance Academy is also held throughout the country. And we just had a testimonial from a kid who was talking about the fact that she had never seen black and brown kids her age. This is an early high school student um, in orchestra performing. And so after Sphinx, she just had a whole new lease on it all and really started to find self-motivation because she saw the possibilities. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's next uh, for Sphinx now that the world has kind of come back together after the pandemic and you're holding the national competition in, in person, uh, what's coming up? You know, <laughs> we really just wanna grow our programs. We have grown a lot over the last five years and kind of develop a whole pipeline and landscape that starts at elementary, but also goes all the way to uh, large grants to support artists' ideas, right? Composition. And we have now composers who are now residents um, at Chicago Symphony at um, the Kennedy Center. And so we just wanna make sure that we're able to continue to support them as best we can. And so we have to, you know, continue to do our job as fundraisers and as advocates and uh, make sure that we keep this programming solid. And we just let the artists tell us where we're gonna go. We yeah. survey, we keep in touch with what they want and that's how we grow. That's how we find it best to grow, right? From our constituency, not necessarily what our pipe dreams are. <laughs> Great to have you here with us on American Black Journal. Congratulations on a quarter century of uh, Sphinx. And of course, congratulations to my friend, Aaron Dworkin, who I've always been uh, a great fan of. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me.